By tradition, the primeval lotus incarnation of Vishnu is followed immediately by his fish incarnation, the Matsya Avatara, which is then followed by Vishnu's descent to earth as a cosmic turtle, known in Sanskrit as a kurma, turtle. The long and elaborate tales of Vishnu's turtle descent borrow quite liberally from a slew of Vedic themes that relate to the preparation of soma potions. The myth is known specifically as the Samudra Manta tale, meaning the churning of Vishnu's ocean of milky nectar. Samudra meaning ocean and Manta meaning a mixture or a churning. We discuss this subject in detail, the churning, in our episode on the Upanishads. And in keeping with Vedic tradition, the tale plays itself out in the context of a traditional battle between the Devas and the Asuras, the gods of the earth and sky. Kurma is encountered in historical records as an incarnation of Prajapati in the Vedic Hundred Path Brahmana, Prajapati being one of Soma's titles as a creator of creatures, Prajapati. This particular Brahmana notes that the turtle's lower carapace becomes the earth and his upper shell becomes the sky. And true to Vedic tradition, the divine turtle also produces the so-called life sap of existence for the Vedic god of fire, Agni, by raising the plant god, Soma, into the air by means of a tree of life. To quote, Rich in honey may the tree be for us, rich in honey the sun, full of honey these divine cows. Now, honey is sometimes a reference to Soma in the Vedas. And this ancient theme likely relates to a relief at Sanchi some 2,200 years ago, uh, which associates a lotus tree of life motif with a cosmic turtle. Close connections between the elixir of immortality and Vishnu's turtle avatar is the focus of this classical tale in Indian mythology. But the manner in which the nectar and the turtle manifest their relationship in the churning of Vishnu's milky ocean, is unique. In post-Vedic eras, Kurma is responsible for uplifting a lotus-shaped mountain by the name of Mount Mandara, uh, a synonym of Mount Meru, from Vishnu's cosmic ocean of nectar, such that the devas and asuras might employ the golden peak of this mountain as a stirring rod. But they also will require the assistance of a divine dragon. The Samudra Manta myth proceeds as thus in the Bhagavata Purana. Once when the inhabitants of the triple world of Brahmaloka were despairing over conflicts between the sky gods and the covetous Asuras, Indra and his allies were forced to seek the assistance of Brahma. But the grandsire of the gods confessed that there was little he could do to pacify the unruly Asuras. So the Devas set off in search of Vishnu on the distant shores of his milky ocean. There they encountered the supreme Lord Hari, carrying his four symbols, the lotus, the conch, the solar disk, and a mace. They bowed and praised the lotus-eyed god with the sacred syllable Om, and then requested that Vishnu assist them in restoring order to the earth. Vishnu agreed to this request and proceeded to renew the strength of the sky gods by offering the devas residues of his immortalizing nectar. He recommended they churn his vast ocean of Soma to fully restore their vigor and powers. But to do so, the devas would have to enlist the aid of the Asuras. Only by the concerted efforts of both clans would the gods of the earth and sky be able to encoil the body of a mighty serpent, Vasuki by name, and wrap it around the great Mount Mandara. If they could accomplish this feat, they could then turn the golden lotus mountain of the gods as though it were a churning rod and churn for the elixir of immortality. As the devas and Ashuras began to churn that mountain, 
they found that much to their consternation, that weighty world mountain would sink back into the milky ocean. Thus, Vishnu assumed the form of a marvelous turtle, Kurma, and descended into his ocean of milk to give support to the revolving mountain upon his back. And as that wondrous mountain began to rise from the abyss, Vishnu, the Lord with one thousand arms, stood like a king by the mountain and stabilized the earth with a single hand. At once the churning rod began to produce the elixir of immortality, thereby provoking the gods to chant the sacred syllable Om and to praise their Lord in the name of Brahma, the creator, Vishnu, the sustainer, and Shiva, the destroyer. Many a divine creature began to emerge from the milky abyss to fill their pitchers of gold with the coveted nectar. And first to appear was Surabi, the wish-yielding cow, for she produces abundant milk and ghee, as well as Vishnu's ocean of nectiferous milk. The next to appear was the white horse of Indra, Uchais Ravas, who arose with the radiance of the moon. And next to arrive on the scene was the majestic moon-white elephant of Indra, Airavata. And then came the dancing lotus nymphs, the Apsaras, each of them gesturing with their charming postures and bewitching glances. Lastly, the beautifully lotus-bodied goddess and feminine aspect of Vishnu appeared, Sri Lakshmi, the consort of Lord Hari the veritable embodiment of prosperity and abundance, Shri. Indra and the devas began collecting the mortalizing waters and pitchers of gold, while the lotus nymphs danced in jubilation to the sound of music and the chanting of Vedic hymns. The four great elephants that support the quarters of the earth convened upon Sri Lakshmi and proceeded to bathe her with streams of waters of life, while the famous goddess of the lotus with a lotus in golden pots filled with elixir in each of her hands, made a garland of lotuses to place over her beloved husband. With her slim waist and large breasts pasted with sandalwood and saffron, she shined like a creeper of gold with blooming eyes. The exhilarated devas were content, of course, with the outpourings of elixir. But the dispirited asuras became envious once again and began snatching jars of the nectar away from the sacrificers. Thus Vishnu proceeded to transform himself into a provocative female aspect of a blue lotus, Mohini by name, and began to parade around the shuras with lotus petal dyes. The appearance of this beautiful maiden with jars full of nectar and eyes that swam in inebriation beguiled those Asuras into forfeiting their stolen shares of the treasured nectar. And with those remaining portions, Vishnu was able to confer immortality on all of the Devas. The famous and ever popular tale of the churning of Vishnu's milking ocean is introduced by the ancient theme of intensifying tensions between the Devas and Asuras, due, per the usual, to unequal portions of Soma between the gods of the earth and sky. The body of the mythic serpent known as Vasuki, in this tale, is wrapped around Lotus Mount Mandara to churn the ocean, but not without the assistance of Vishnu's turtle and human forms to stabilize the base of the mountain. At Tondebati in southern Cambodia, Surya the sun and Chandrasoma the moon illuminate the lotus throne of Brahma in, on his Brahma Loka, a.k.a. Mount Mandara. Brahma's four faces observe a heavenly troop of lotus nymphs that dance and sing to the chanting of Vedic hymns in the heavens. Although portrayals of Mount Mandara as a lotus blossom are as common in Indian mythology as they are in the arts, art historians have rarely appreciated the underlying meaning of this symbolic relationship. The association likely derives from Vedic verses, I'm thinking, that identify a mythical mountain 
as the home of Soma and the material source of the elixir of the gods. Classical Hindu mythology frequently identifies this holy mountain as either Mount Meru or Mount Mandara, and recognize it as the firstborn mountain of Vishnu that arises from the creator's navel during the inception of lotus cycles. Hence, its lotus form. Since the lotus flower is conveniently placed at the tip of Vishnu's umbilicus and is recognized as the birthplace of Brahma, the Shiva Purana asserts, In that lotus was born the four-faced lord of devas, Brahma, the chief of Prajapatis, the lord of the universe. His creation is the seed of the lotus precisely. That would be a very important seed because it's the source of all creation. Mount Meru itself is said to be endowed with the qualities of Prajapati in the Brahmanda Purana, the qualities of Prajapati, which is to say that the golden mountain is filled with a vital sap that stimulates the processes of creation. And since Soma is identified specifically, explicitly as Prajapati in the Rig Veda, it only follows that the cosmic mountain and lotus are the source of the gods Amrita, in his milky samudra, his ocean of milk. Amrita, the soma beverage, does not gush spontaneously from Lotus Mountain, however, as it requires the active participation of the gods of the earth and sky to churn the milky ocean for its creative principle. This peculiar procedure is illustrated by an enquiring composition at Preya Pitu where the lotus-crowned devas smile on one side of the mythic dragon, while the discontented Ashuras pout on the other end of Vasuki's body. We note that lotus shoots begin to sprout from the lotus-navel serpent's body in an outpouring of spiritual fires and, and liquid nectar. The symbolic relationships between a primeval lotus, a serpent, and turtle are presented in a different vein within the nearby temple of Angkor Wat. Here we note that Kurma's carapace is fashioned in the image of a lotus blossom, and that his head sustains yet another blossom. So evidently, Vishnu is, at once, a turtle and a flower. In a similar vein, we observe Vasuki on the same relief with a lotus flower on his head and lotus medallions on each of his expanded hoods. A multi-headed Ashura with a pedaloid belt grasps the body of Vasuki to churn Lotus Mountain for its immortalizing nectars, while a host of lotus nymphs uh, dance in the skies, once again, as we know, to the chants of Vedic mantras. So the people who created this image were also chanting Vedic hymns while they were at work, no doubt. This mythic image is complemented by the full-bodied portraits of hundreds of life-sized lotus nymphs on walls that separated the inner sanctums of Angkor Wat from the outside world. But here the mythic figures actually represent an historical dimension of Hindu mythology insofar as they depict true-to-life dancers that apparently enacted the role of lotus nymphs in religious rituals behind the walls of Cambodia's most famous temple. They all wear lotus stems in their hair and uphold full-blown lotus flowers as they overlook courtyards filled with water. Presumably, these courtyards were all filled with living lotus groves within the temple complex. One can only imagine what a sight this must have been during the 11th and 12th centuries when the Khmer Empire was in top form. <laughs>